Well, at the time of this recording, Eleanor has effectively been home for seven days. And out of those seven days, five days of it were raining. The only day that was dry was the first day she arrived and the day I went to tech session. So I haven't had a single chance to work on anything Eleanor related. All right, well, I'm looking over this frame here, and we've got the floor plan in it, good and solid. This is a nice piece of diamond plate that, unfortunately, I don't have anymore. But when I started to realize I don't need to bolt anything to the floor, I think I may not even have to add that missing piece. And if I do, uh, just a standard piece of sheet metal, in fact, something I've cut off the bus that I don't need anymore, I could probably just weld right into there because it doesn't need to be structural. The old seat actually rests on the frame itself and gets bolted in this way. Now the new seat that I have gets bolted in from the bottom. You see the six bolts in the corners there. In order for that to go in, it would need to bolt to the floor. And the floor is well, semi-structural, but in this case, if that's what I had available to me, that's what I would use, but that's not gonna work for here because I can't bolt the seat directly to the thin sheet metal that I'm gonna put in here. Unless I find another piece of diamond plate, I'm not gonna spend a lot of money. I'm not gonna bolt it to the floor. So I had an idea. I said, well, why don't I take the old seat frame, which is here. It has a good bottom on it. And that bottom just happens to bolt directly into these brackets that are on here. So I think with a little bit of cutting, I can actually take this off of here and then make an adapter to adapt it to this seat. And I think that's what we're gonna do today. Gee, that's easy. I thought I was gonna have to cut welds. <laughs> that's not gonna be hard at all. Okay. Okay, here's that frame. Looks like it goes in there just like that. And it has adjustability, which is nice. The length from front to back differs from the front to back here on the seat. So I'm not going to be able to run bolts through this and then through here. So I think what I'm going to do is use some angle iron. And I'll cut a couple of slots. And it looks like this is a one-inch square tube. So I'll slot it out. Put down the angle iron like this. And then I'll drill out the holes in the seat. So that way I can just drill through the angle iron like this. And attach it directly to the bottom with some suitable bolts. I think that will all work out real nicely. And... I can either bolt it or weld it down to the bracket here. And it keeps the adjustability, which is nice too. Although, me, I built this thing for a maximum <laughs> for me. But if I did put a midge in here, we can shorten it down by quite a bit. And if I lengthen the adjusters even further by adding some more angle iron, I can actually make it go quite a distance further forward. But I think that's what we're gonna do. And this actually looks pretty good. And best of all, I can weld this piece in whenever. It doesn't have to go in now because, well, it's not going to be attached to structurally at all. All right, we're gonna see about getting the seat mounted up with these brackets. This guy right here. Up on top of all this, we get these bolted up underneath. I think. Trying to run these delicate bolts into place with cold freaking fingers. 
And yeah, I'm sure it's colder where you're at. It always is, right? So if you post it down in the comments, yeah, I know you did it. <laughs> this is not what I'm used to, and this is, of course, not why people move to Florida. Maybe it is, because it's still a lot warmer, and it is where I come from. <laughs> All right, well, that seemed to get the job done on the... This is actually the left side, even though it's right to me. Once that seat flips over, they flip sides. Okay. And let's leave this guy. Here we go. Hate when that happens. close to the edge to get the tool on it. That's okay. There's always always another way, right guys? Gives us our bracket. And then we're going to see what it looks like bolted down to this down here. Put a couple of these bolts in. And just so we can put this where it belongs. Don't stop it from coming loose or teetering or what have you. measurements here to make sure that we are square or at least close to it three and three quarter four inches down when I get everything appropriately notched but I don't know if it's going to clear the cage properly the cage is going to come up this way and I see it already hitting the seat back this is why we're eyeballing things here let's put the cage back on it
Well, that's better than I thought. There's the seat in there properly placed. It's gonna go down about an inch and a half, so it's higher than it needs to be right now. But when I backed it all the way against this rail, it came and didn't quite hit it up top. So it's in a good position right where it's at. Um, I am going to move the plate that it's sitting on top of here, well, plate, rack, whatever you want to call it, it uh, backwards before we weld it together. So that way this seat has some amount of adjustability so I can push it forwards a couple inches if I do have somebody that's uh, a lot smaller than I am. But otherwise, this is coming together and it's starting to look really good. The seat is up a little higher than it would be, which doesn't do anything for your center of gravity. But <laughs> I think we'll, uh, we'll be able to make do with what we got. But uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and loosen up that bracket on the bottom there. Move that rack back. Figure out where we're going to be. And then make our notches in the seat brackets that I mounted on there and uh, notch them out, and then get them ready to be welded. Yeah, all right. We've got the mounting uh, bracket here pushed backwards, and you can see the seat, which is the piece I need to notch out. So I'm gonna cut these out here, right here and right here, do the same on both sides, and I'm gonna measure them the same, assuming that everything is square, or at least will be square. But before we do any proper welding, we're gonna decide if I want to uh, left-hand align the seat, okay, or if I want to right hand align the seat and there's reasons why I'm thinking of that so before we actually commit to the welding we're just gonna get it notched and get the seat laid in there and the reason why I'm considering that if I put the seat way over to the left for one thing I don't have to move the steering uh, rack to get it straight so that way the steering column stays where it needs to be and you have a centered steering experience now that will take most of the weight and push it over to the left hand side of the vehicle which is going to cause it to be you know a little bit imbalanced but if i decide to put a custom engine on here and looking at where the sprocket drive is which is dead center in this axle without modifying that that means the engine would be kind of aligned to the the right so kind of offsetting the weight between the driver and the engine that's kind of what i'm thinking of but i don't know if we're going to need to do that but i can always make these brackets bolt in if I need to change plans on this for some reason rather than welding them uh, of course if I always weld them I can always cut them back out but that's a real pain in the ass but things to think about here based on what's gonna happen next and what I'm gonna do with an engine otherwise while we're out here I did a little bit of grinding you see a lot of the welds disappeared I went over them one more time because I was just so unhappy with them I made sure everything was properly penetrated and melted together it includes both layers of steel I made sure everything's solid when you hit this, you don't hear the jingling of the other pipe inside of it, so they're nice and tight. Everything's all welded together. And uh, I'm just really happy with the way this turned out. Even though the outer diameter of this pipe is a little bit slimmer than this one. But that's okay, when everything gets cleaned up, painted, and maybe I put a little bit of body fill around it so I'll hide it, so you won't see the transition, but otherwise it looks great. There's a little bit of uh, surface rust on some of it because it rained like hell for the last few days. And this, of course, was sitting outside, but that's just the way it goes. But I'll go over it with some, uh, cat piss, phosphoric acid, for those of you who don't know, and then we'll get the thing properly primed and painted later, but for now, we'll just go ahead and acid treat it. Same thing on that side, of course, and it looks like it's turning out pretty good. Okay, well, I'm going to make some lines, cut some notches, and see if we can get the seat to lay where it's supposed to, and then I'm going to sit in there and see what I think of it. And of course, this cage is going to go up, so it's still going to move from where it's at, because it's just too low. It's uh, right in my line of sight. My eyes are directly in line with this, so the cage definitely needs to go up. And if I turned out I was going to get tossed around or something, it's going to slam into my head or my face or break my nose or something. So this whole cage needs to go up to probably about here, make this thing a little more adult sized. Well, all right, let's start cutting some notches. Perfect fit on the first try. 
one crooked cut. <laughs> the rest of them look pretty good. some clamps on it. You can just move it. Like it's on rails. That's pretty cool actually. Well let's have a seat in it and see what we think. Of course I gotta take the cage back off because I'm not gonna try to climb in there while it's on there. Let's see what we got. jeans are a little too tight. Oh yeah. Very nice. Solid. Of course it needs to be welded in because it teeters forward the back a little bit but once that's welded in it'll be really good but the seat hugs me really nice. Yeah I could get used to this. I bring the steering wheel right about here. The more I've been thinking about it, the more I think I'm just going to weld it in centered. I'm not going to dick around with the slide side to side BS that I was talking about earlier. I don't think this, uh, this needs it. It might be a little overkill. Something I'm building that I'll never use. <laughs> well, this is good. There's a piece of that hand truck from earlier. I can build the dash out of it. And I put the steering wheel on the end here. But this piece should do that, I would think. I can get that welded in, make it neater, and come up with some kind of solution to make it work. Um, I've got a few different ways I can move the steering shaft. The steering shaft is going down on this side, needs to be centered. But there's a few different things that I can do to make that work. This is good. The duck man approves. Well, what you guys didn't see is I went ahead and tacked it in in a couple spots to get the uh, brackets all attached to each other. Uh, everything is centered. There's seven and an eighth inch on each side, so it looks good as far as that's concerned. Uh, what I'm going to do is, because this is plastic, is I'm going to remove the brackets from the seat before I do any more welding to it, because otherwise this thing is going to burn. And as much fun as that might be, I'd rather not ruin the seat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbolt it. And I'm going to try to, i got to keep them square, this is going to be the hardest thing because I don't have a proper welding table. If I did, it wouldn't be an issue. But I'm going to try to just clamp them down to the chassis, uh, the flat uh, diamond plate that's over here. And just, just hold it down to keep it as square as possible. Of course, once I bolt it to the seat, it'll kind of square itself back up. But I'm going to try to not mangle it as much as I can. And you'll see me out here with a wet sponge as I do some of the welding because uh, I'm going to try to cool them down so they don't warp that much. It's going to warp no matter what. I know it's going to, but I'm trying to minimize that. All right, let's take this thing back off. And then, of course, the first one gets stuck. Look at that. Right in there. Oh, man. <laughs> Ah, story of my life right here. The very first one. Look at this. There's not even enough of it sticking out of the socket to be able to rethread it. Ah, I hate when crap like that happens, man. All right. Here we go. Again, yeah, that one's stuck. Nuisance. All right. 
that comes off. That's pretty cool. That worked out nicely. All right, get the seat out the way. Yeah, that turned out pretty good. Use a little hit with a wire wheel, maybe even a little Dremel one to get into some of the smaller spaces, but some spatter in here, very common with flux core. I'm trying to use up the last of the flux core that I've got. So I don't want to go back to doing thin auto body stuff with the flux core. I made my point and demonstrated that it can be done. And I built the entire Eleanor that way. You can't use that! Yeah, well I did. <laughs> yep, looks like all our holes line up. Ooh, making a little smoke. Okay, I guess it was a little hotter than I thought. <laughs> Don't put that on the plastic. All right, well, we'll let that cool down and then we'll get it bolted up to that seat. I think I'm happy with what we got here. It looks like it's going to be pretty good. We'll bolt this sucker down. And I think it goes on there like that. I don't remember now. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. It goes on there just like that. Get all of our bolts. My bolt holes still line up and it looks like everything is sitting flat. That's what we were hoping for. Some of these bolts I can hardly get my damn fingers on them. I'm just snugging these things up a bit. Because I did have that one bolt over here. I couldn't hardly get the tool on. Now we did have a damn yappy mutt next to her. Barking. Trying to work as always. That's the one. This was the challenge. For some reason that bolt is a little closer to the outside. Here we go. 
the seat. Let's throw it in there and see what she looks like. Okay. Sounds like it's a little out of square, but that square bracket that it was on was never really square anyway. It's only off by a little bit. Once we bolt it down, it's not going to go anywhere. like it moves gives you about three inches of forward to back that's good I'm gonna say maximum adjustment is probably what I need Right about there is where we're gonna lock it down real quick and then we're gonna have a seat. myself kind of moving with the cart but right about here is where it needs to be okay giving me some ideas here well every time I sit down I always come up with something new in my mind <laughs> I don't want to share everything because if I do people say oh it's a terrible idea so I just build stuff now and then I show you when it's done and you always have that one guy, I would have done it differently. Oh well, I did it, it's good, it's better than my expectations, and it works, so, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> All right, well, I think that's where we're gonna have it. This thing has about 90 degrees, a little more than 90 degrees, maybe 100 degrees or so in each direction. So that would give it and it's a bigger wheel, so it'll slow down my steering a little bit, so it'll be less twitchy. It's like even you turn just a little bit, it's like, whoa! Lengthening this thing as I have isn't going to help my turn radius at all, and that's something about this is that if you're not on that throttle when you're in that turn, this solid rear axle will just plow the front wheels, so it doesn't like to turn around at all. So if you let off the throttle and turn like you think you would in, in an ordinary car, this doesn't do that. You have to get on that throttle. And one of the things that I don't like you can see it. The rear suspension is way too soft and the front suspension is way too stiff. I need to swap it so that way the front is a little softer, so that way the front end gets a little better traction and that way when you're in a turn it'll cause the thing to lean and you'll get a little three-wheel action. You want one of these rear wheels to lift up so that way that solid axle doesn't plow the front wheels. Instead you have one drive wheel so it sort of simulates a uh, proper open differential. It's this thing um, doesn't have such a thing. Although I probably could put one on from one of the lawnmowers I have, but we're not going to get into that depth on this thing anytime soon. But I'm happy. Now we have an appropriate seat. 
So please lick your like, your comment, subscribe. Don't forget to plug that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And don't forget, you guys, I got other YouTube channels. Aside from just Duckman Cycles, VW Garage, also VV the Duck VV. So if you ask a question down below about this project, I will try to answer it over there on my other channel. I try to keep all the fluff and all the yabby yabby yabby, which I do too much of in most of my videos anyway, or so a lot of dove heads say. But a lot of the people also compliment me because I describe things to them and I explain how things work. So I don't mind talking a little bit more than most of the other people. Besides, it's a little buffer and it takes up a few extra minutes and sometimes you got to make a video over, I think it's 8 to 10 minutes right now on YouTube just to make sure that you have a good video. So, as always, thanks guys. We'll see you next time. All right, you remember that was the old seat that we've got there. Here's the new seat that we got mounted. B's got the steering wheel, which I'm going to take from her there in just a second. That way she can comfortably slip herself into that seat and see what she thinks. So we're going to have her test drive in this thing. You may have a little trouble reaching them pedals with how it's set up, but... Well, you know what? Your legs are probably as long as mine are. Yeah, you're pretty good. You're pretty good. And we can always slide the seat forwards too. It has an adjustment on it, so you get about two or three inches more. Yeah. Oh, that'll be plenty. You should be able to drive that then. Yeah. And then the steering wheel will go in there, something like that right at about that height and level. It's nice that I get to see somebody else doing this now, and I actually have a little bit of an idea as to what it's gonna be like when I assemble this. Beep beep. You're bitty crowing over there. On my way to f***ing mom. Uh, whoa! Oh, I can't say that on the camera. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah? Yeah, I'll just give you a blippity. Yeah. Hey, bitty. What are you doing, bitty? <laughs> Biddy the chicken. It's probably Biddy the rooster. Still love that they are labeled to go and stop. I feel like some hu some like human, some adult people need that in their cars. Yeah. Especially in this state. Yeah, especially in this state. I'm pretty always sure, hitting the wrong pedal. I'm pretty sure that people in Florida get their driver's licenses as like a prize out of a cereal box. Cereal box prize. Like a Cracker Jack prize. Well, as a friend of mine and I once discussed, he says people that are licensed in Florida. All that that means is that they pass the minimum requirements <laughs> to get the paperwork. <laughs> Very proud that I was not licensed in Florida before I moved here. As I always had this thought, wouldn't it be nice to be able to drive 10 or 15 miles an hour over the limit if you had a special license that allowed you to do so? I don't trust dum-dums on the road today. Well, remember, you have to have a special license, which means you don't pass the minimum requirements. You have to be in the upper range someplace. So it gives you the ability to drive at that with that skill level if you have it and your vehicle which you are driving has also been authenticated. I think it'd be a great way for the, the, the state to cash in. Yeah, the problem is that if you've got dopes that don't pass that and they're still driving slow, they can still be dangerous to people who are driving faster. Well, if they're driving exceptionally slow, that's, that is the case, yes. <laughs> and there's a lot of old people in Florida. And there's a lot of old people. Not so much around here, but down the other end of the state, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They get around like, Boca Raton. And you get snowbirds. Yeah, I'm Fort Myers. We don't get those so much here either. Not until the spring. I've already seen a few. When the spring comes around, things start to change because everybody wants to get it in the warmer weather a little faster. We already so. got one that pulled, like, tried to change three lanes in front of us uh, this morning, of course, with out of state plates. Oh boy. Yeah. Memorial Day weekend. Well, well, you know what happens here. Everybody comes from out of state, and this I place is a madhouse. I know what this, yeah, weekend is this because I'm becomes part of it. a madhouse. <laughs> it's a fun madhouse. Well, if you're stationary, but when you're driving, it's not. <laughs> there will be lots of fun things on my page during Memorial All Day right. weekend. Well, maybe we'll get some of them on video. Yeah. Probably not on your videos. <laughs> Definitely on mine. On your videos. How do really we get is. to your videos? Huh? How do we get to your videos? Go to your page. Go oh. to duckshit.net. You'll see is. links to my page. Oh! That's it. Support sweet Beezus. Oh. oh. That was funny. That was like on cue. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, Miss Biddy? Or Mr. Biddy? Or whatever kind of Biddy you are? It's, it's just Biddy. You're a loved Biddy. That's what you are. Snuggly Biddy. Snuggly Biddy. Oh, she's getting out. <laughs> Biddy and the titty. Just one. Just, just one, one titty? titty. I replaced the other one with a rooster. No, the other one died accidentally, like... <laughs> if it were Japanese anime, you could replace one with a cock. Oh. Ew. No, thank you. Yeah, put it right there. Put it in your bra. A cock bra. <laughs> I was trying to do uh, hang cleans at the gym, and I, like, completely took out one of my boobs. Oh! 
right with the bar. R.I.P. Lefty. Doink. Yeah, it hurt. Yeah, you doinked it. Yeah, because I was trying to like keep it as close to my body as possible, but um, <laughs> yeah. Bitty bitty. <laughs> Running through the junkyard. Yeah, it's awfully hard with all the debris around here. I'm not gonna terrorize Biddy the way I would Boomer. You gotta get more shit out of this yard. That lawnmower that's right in front of us there, that is Joel's landmower. Landmower. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Yeah, it kind of still makes sense. I might just start calling him that. Landmower. But that is his lawnmower. He's the one that hatched uh, Biddy's egg. And I said I owed him a favor and his lawnmower wasn't running. It actually comes from somebody else here in town, another Volkswagen guy. And uh, I think he got a little stiffed on it when he bought it, so I'm gonna help him out. He's been down in the dumps about it. He spent all kinds of money that he didn't have. A screwdriver! What's left of one. But actually, you know, it's not too bad. I recognize that one. That's been around my shop for a while, man. Got misplaced. Whoa, it's Biddy! Oh, it's Biddy! Come here, Biddy. Come here, Biddy. You know, like the ducks are. The ducks will come right into my hand. Yep. Boomer will come in my hand. Boomer will shit in your hand, too. Here you go, Biddy. Biddy, Biddy, Biddy. Biddy doesn't want to have anything to do with anybody right now. Yeah, Biddy's free. You got a moment of freedom, gonna enjoy it. Usually the only time I let him out is whenever I'm taking the other ducks out. So I put them in that carrier. And Biddy will follow me. For them, I don't know if they're gonna run away. I still don't. A biddy will stay, we'll stay close, never go too far. Anyway, well, I guess that's it, we'll wrap that up. Boop.